Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black historic deck that we built during one of our live streams called Cavalier Combo. It's a mid-range deck that doesn't need the combo to win, but I'll still walk you through it here. And the main combo piece is Cavalier of Night, 5 mana for a 4-5 a lifelinking creature, that when it enters the battlefield we can sacrifice another creature, and if we do we can destroy target creature and opponent controls, and when Cavalier of Night dies, return target creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So if we have Cavalier of Night and combo it with two copies of Mirror Image, which is a 3 mana 0, zero that can enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature we control, we can potentially set up an infinite loop. So if we have a Mirror Image already in the graveyard and a copy of Cavalier of Night in play, and then play Mirror Image from our hand, we can set up this infinite loop. Since Mirror Image can copy Cavalier of Night, the Enter the Battlefield trigger from Cavalier of Night happens, we can sacrifice the original Cavalier of Night, and then the dice ability on the original Cavalier will happen, returning a creature with convert mana cost 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, which will return the second copy of Mirror Image to the battlefield, which can now copy the original Mirror Imaged Cavalier of Night, then again the Mirror Imaged Cavalier of Night will trigger, we can sacrifice the original Mirror Image, which will go to the graveyard, and then we can bring back the Mirror Image with the Cavalier of Night trigger from the Cavalier dying, and then we can kind of keep doing that forever and ever, which will result in a bunch of triggers from Cavalier of Night destroying opposing creatures, so we can wipe the opponent's board, so it's a nice one-sided sweeper. But then if we add one additional combo piece, which is Ayara, first of Lockthwain, we can also just kill the opponent on the spot, because whenever Ayara or another black creature enters the battlefield under our control, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life, and if we play Mirror Image copying Cavalier of Night, it will enter the battlefield as a black creature, which will trigger Ayara. So that's the infinite combo that we are capable of. Of course, it does require quite a few combo pieces, two copies of Mirror Image, a Cavalier, and ideally also Ayara. But our deck is totally fine without pulling off this infinite combo, as we can play a nice fair mid-range plan. So at one mana, we've got four copies of Crypt Breaker, alongside a couple other zombies in the deck, to provide a nice bit of card advantage. Crib Breaker also serves as a discard outlet, so we can potentially discard Mirror Image from our hand to get it in the graveyard, although we can always play Mirror Image and decline to copy something just to put it in the graveyard. Then at 2 mana we've got 4 copies of Dusk Legion Zealot as a 1-1 that draws a card and loses 1 life when it enters the battlefield, so just helps us dig deeper towards our combo pieces, and it's also a black creature that we can sacrifice to Ayara to draw additional cards. Then we also have the full playset of Mire Triton as a 2 mana 2 1 Death Toucher that mills the top 2 cards and gains 2 life, so also helps us put additional cards in the graveyard. And a 2 1 is also a zombie, so it helps us with Crib Breaker, so it has a bit of synergy there too. Then at 3 mana, we've got our 4 copies of Mirror Image, which doesn't mind copying some of our cheaper creatures like the Zealot or the Mire Triton, since those still have irrelevant enter battlefield abilities. Then we have 2 copies of Midnight Reaper as another zombie to go with our Crib Breaker, and we'll also end up sacrificing some of our creatures to Ayara, which will draw us even more cards with the Midnight Reaper in play. We've got the full playset of Murder Strider to help us interact with the opponent, destroying creatures or planeswalkers, and also makes a zombie creature which works with the Crib Breaker. And then the full playset of Ayara to help us combo kill the opponent, and also just a good value card in this deck. And then at 4 mana, 3 copies of a Ravenous Chupacabra, which can destroy a creature when it enters the battlefield, and 3 copies of Atris, Oracle of Half-Truths, which is a 3-2 mana creature that provides a bit of card advantage when it enters the battlefield, and also makes for a nice mini-game, as the opponent has to decide which cards to reveal and which cards to put face down. And then uh, some of those cards will also end up in the graveyard, which is still a fine place for them to be, to potentially help us pull off the infinite combo. And then four copies of Cavalier of Night, which is also just a fine creature by itself. We've got these Dusk Legion Zealots, we don't mind sacrificing to it in the first place. And then a nice 4-5 Lifelinker, also great against aggressive red decks. And then a mana base, only one island, since we do need triple black for Ayara, so we want to limit the number of islands in the deck. Two copies of Castle Lochthwain to draw more cards. And then a 9 Swamps and 12 Dual Lands, including Drown Catacomb, 4 Temple of Deceit and 4 Watery Grave. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. I'll try it.
Alright, mono blue tempo once again. So this seems like a matchup where I just want to make a zombie token here. I guess I could play a second crit breaker too, but it's a bit more mana efficient to make a zombie. That's a lot of miscloaked heralds. So I could make another zombie and play Crib Breaker. I think I'm just gonna play Ayara to start getting a bit of life, and then next turn I could play Crib Breaker and start drawing cards too. And I'll probably attack with the zombie first. So hopefully we can dodge a Curious Obsession. Alright, so... Can put a Crib Breaker on the stack. See what happens. Sure. So I can send a Yara and a zombie, make another zombie. Terramander could potentially become a threat. Yeah, against these miscloaked heralds, I'm not sure if I'm just better off uh, attacking instead of drawing cards. Atris is tempting. But if they have another essence capture, that would be pretty bad. So maybe going Dusk Legion Zealot and activate Crypt Breakers to play. Yeah, let's start there. Ah, some Merfolk Trickster instead. Sure. Tabs down Ayara. So I guess I could make a zombie in response. That way we still get the Ayara trigger. And then do I want to sacrifice anything with Ayara? Probably not. And then the zombies can attack. Seven, eight, nine. And Murder Strider should be lethal. Attack with everyone. That's six, seven, eight. Play a black creature and they're dead. Alright, sweet. So yeah, Crib Breaker against counter spell heavy decks is just a nice one drop to have access to since you can resolve it and just rely on the activated abilities. Oh ho, I see. It's the Crib Breaker Mirror. Hmm, red-black. I don't think I want to trade. 
I've got a Triton on two and now even a Reaper on three, so... Got a couple zombies. So, mirror image and graveyard, that's good. Rotting Regisaur. So, I guess my opponent on a Black Rat Cleave deck. So, I could Murder Strider the Regisaur here, that's probably safer than playing Midnight Reaper. Just make him discard a card first. I mean, I guess Triton technically blocks Regisaur. I'll do this. We can survive one cleave hit, potentially. Aha, Death Baron, so... I guess this is a zombie too, so that makes sense. I might actually want to just kill the Crypt Breaker here. Instead of anything else. Yeah, giving a Regisaur Death Touch with Ember Cleave is pretty sweet too. I'm just gonna draw more cards, I think. Another Death Baron. And another Crib Breaker, which is probably what I'm killing. Yeah, the Meyer Triton being pretty nice here. Crib Breaker doing a ton of work. Croxa, okay. So, I guess we've got to combo next turn. Play Cavalier now. Sacrifice. I guess Midnight Reaper can go. I guess I could have drawn a card first, but... Eh, it doesn't matter. I guess with Midnight Reaper in play, if I don't have a Yara... Of course, we have to be careful that we don't deal too much damage to ourselves. But the next turn I can play a Yara, Mirror Image, Copy Cavalier, and we've got infinite damage alongside infinite Cavalier triggers.
All right, and our opponent figures it out. Nice. And sure. Hopefully the Zealots can draw us into a third land. Turn one Elves. Wayward Swordtooth, alright. I can dig it. So this could be an Experimental Frenzy deck. Or I guess just Red Green Dinos. Well, Chupacabra's pretty good against creature decks, but we need to hit our land drops. And Dryad of Elysian Grove, another way of playing extra lands. And there's a third land, that's good. Now I might just play another Zealot instead of Murder Strider here. So we can start Chupacabraing. Probably shouldn't have played my land first in case we drew a temple. Ooh, Escape to the Wilds, that's a nice one too, with all these extra land drops available. Well, that's quite uh, the turn. And there's a Frenzy. Yeah, Frenzy is going to be hard to stop. I need to kill all the extra land drop creatures, essentially. Still no fourth land. So probably just need to murder Strider the Swordtooth. But we're falling pretty far behind. Yeah, if we could hit our land drops, this hand might have been fine, although the Frenzy still would have been an issue going late. Another Jade Lights. And yeah, the Explorer here is quite good with the Frenzy too. Well, opponent had a pretty sweet draw. So the Dryad, a good addition for this archetype, since before you only had Swordtooth to play extra lands if you wanted to stay red-green. And Escape, a pretty nice one too. I remember trying this in the Frenzy deck at some points. Can play Chupacabra, but it's too little too late. Alright, GG's. Sure. Well, against Modern Red, we've got a bunch of life gain here, so... Hopefully that's enough. Probably see removal on the Triton before we can sack it to a Yara. Is this a Chain Whirler maybe? But then they need one more counter on the Steamkin. <laughs> okay.
I did consider sacking the Triton since their play last turn kind of indicated that they might have been holding a Chain Whirler. I mean, just playing Cavalier here as a 4-5 isn't bad. I wouldn't get to kill anything. But if it dies, it brings back a creature as well. Probably not gonna block the Chain Whirler and just take three. Yeah, we still have a pretty healthy life total on the bright side. Well, we won't be attacking the opponent anytime soon, but... That's okay. So we're pretty close to having the combo wrapped up here. You can go Yara, Mirror Image, Copy, Cavalier. And then I guess just sack a Yara to kill a Chain Whirler. And then Atris can maybe help us find the missing piece. Yeah, if we find another mirror image, we can kill all the opponent stuff next turn. Or this turn. Opponent packs it in. Giving us the mirror image face up, maybe not the best idea. Uh, this hand's a little on the slow side, but maybe it's still fine. See if we can find a two drop. Probably gonna keep swamp. This hand is not great against a more controlling deck, but we do have most of the combo pieces. Hmm, this seems like a pretty familiar start. <laughs> nice. Well, this is a pretty bad matchup, I'll tell you that. I guess we're just gonna play some two drops. Oh, I guess we have to attack. I forgot Trove of Temptation has text. Oh well, I guess I'll attack for two then. Could have also decided to just sack the Zealot right away. In case of a Storm's Wrath. Alright, we're gonna get bombed. A taste of my own medicine. They are going after the creatures, so probably no Storm's Wrath in hand then. We're not too far from the combo. Just need another Mirror Image. Could Mirror Image the Zealot, could just play a Cavalier, which might be fine. And I probably just want to attack for three here.
All right, are we close to lethal? Six, seven, eight, nine. Definitely getting close. It's going to be a blink. Bouncing Cavalier. Sure. I guess I want to copy the Zealot just to make sure we keep hitting our land drops. Chandra Awaken Inferno. That one wasn't in the deck. Kept the card on top. That's bad news. Ah, and they did draw Storm's Wrath. So probably just replay Cavalier. The map flips, and with two Troves of Temptation, that can draw a lot of cards. Another Trove. Ooh, Mirror Image. Well, we have the combo. Problem is, we don't have a Yara in play for Infinite Drain. But I guess just copying a Cavalier is fine. Is there any reason for me to sack this? Oh wait, I can bring back Yara, never mind. Yeah, I guess that's probably the play then. All right, sweet. A bittersweet victory. But uh, yeah, if our opponent ever found a Kyurambas the Sea God there with Trove of Temptation in play, that would have been a big issue for us. But uh, yeah, beating our own deck. So any changes we want to make. I've been pretty happy with the deck overall. Seems like we've got a good balance between being a fine mid-range deck that can win the game, especially thanks to Crypt Breaker. And then we've got the potential of comboing the opponent with Cavalier and Mirror Image. Mirror Image, just a fine card in the deck by itself too. But uh, yeah, could potentially see adding a uh, Thassa to the deck since we have so many good Enter Battlefield abilities. Although that wouldn't be the most synergistic with Crypt Breaker and Ayara. Unless we can, of course, flicker a black creature with AR in play, that's still fine. But not too much blue devotion, so Thassa wouldn't turn into a creature, so it's just for the flicker effect. Which is fine in some matchups, but if we're behind, then it's not the best way of catching back up, unless we already have Chupacabras and Cavaliers in play. 
And then at 2 mana, we had a couple of options. Could play Freebooter, could play like a Thought Erasure, even though it's not a creature. Could play Fun Lurker or Burglar Rats, so... There's potentially some room for uh, improvements. Could also see adding more zombies to the deck to make Crypt Breaker better. But once you play Crypt Breaker, you can just make a zombie on the first couple turns to make sure you have those three required zombies to draw some cards. So it's not like we need our entire deck to be zombies for Crypt Breaker to be good. But of course it's better if we have a few incidental zombies like Reaper, Triton, and uh, Murder Strider. So yeah, uh, pretty happy with the overall result. So I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.